stop with a prayer. Now, Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Most of the heart of Jesus. For Mary can see without seeing. Saint Joseph, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Right. <clears throat> so we were on number six or seven or more. Sixteen and number six, huh? With his quote of Pope Agatho. Ah oh, yes. Obedience to the bishop is destroyed and the rights of trampled on the foot at the prison universities. So in the great plan we are six. I thought we were in eight. No, we are in a, we saw Pope Agathos quote. That's paragraph eight. Nine. Nothing can change. Seminarian, but I forgot I'm entirely about it. That's, that's a pivotal quote. You cannot change the uh, nothing that has been really defined can bear no diminution in the constants of dogmas, no change, no addition, and no alteration of sense or even of words. You don't touch those consecrated words. Thus, uh, will that union remain firm and unshaken which reposes on the Sea of Peter as its base, so that the center, once flowed from all, for all the churches, the secular rites of the Catholic communion, may be also for all a defensive war, a protecting asylum, a port against shipwreck, and a treasure enriching them with incalculable goods. Is this the case now? <laughs> Can you go to the Sea of Peter and have this asylum? If you go to uh, St. Peter's Basilica, all you find is a beach balloon, or a football scarf, or a pope who says, if somebody is a gay, who am I to judge? And uh, every day is adding more. I don't know the latest has been adding, but every day is adding more horrors to his teaching. So the devil understood that quote. He says, let's go to Rome, let's take over Rome. And, uh, and, and, uh, and then we'll get the entire thing. Now, what is our trouble affair? Answering to those who say, you are going against the magisterium. You are departing. The Nobis Ordo, they all, all say, but Vatican II is part of the magisterium. We must follow the magisterium of the Church of Rome. What's the answer? They tell you you are div divisive. You are departing from the magisterium. That's your this encyclical that you are reading yourself says it's Rome who is the harbor of peace and tranquility and salvation. Why don't you stick to Rome? What's the answer about Jules Lefebvre? There cannot be two magisterium. You cannot have two Romans <coughs> reconciled with each other. One the opposite of each other. That new Rome is new and it's the opposite. It is not in line with the teaching of the eternal Rome of the previous popes. Why can't the popes today change anything? Because if they change something today, it means that the popes of yesterday we are not so infallible. If a pope today can say the opposite, as Pope Francis does, 
if, if you can say the opposite of what his predecessor said, then when, when Pius XII defined the assumption of Our Lady, are we sure now that he was right? No, because his successor now is coming and says something different from what was taught before. You know, at the end of the debate, uh, you know, because after the fact hey, you've got contact around the syllabus there, he shows it to Kalian Ratzinger, and Kalian Ratzinger told him, yes, but things have changed. And Arthur Lefebvre says, no way. You have to stick to the teaching of your predecessors. Because if now you, if you change today what they taught before, what prevents me from changing what you are saying now? It's not infallibility anymore. How can you say that you can teach infallibly anymore or solemnly anything? Because you, you, you recognize, and that's all Arthur Lefebvre wanted to know. That's all he wanted to know. They're admitting that they have changed. But it's just very important, according to Mrs. Cordova. So, there cannot be a contradiction between two magisterium. So, what Arthur Lefebvre did in his discussions with Rome is to get the evidence, their admission, that they are teaching a different magisterium. And for us Catholics, that's a no way, because it's, the magisterium ceases to be infallible if it contradicts itself. It's a principle of non-contradiction. When um, um, Pope Francis says there is no Catholic God, that contradicts all the councils, especially the Council of Florence or the Council of Trent, all those councils tell us there's only one true religion, which is a Catholic religion, and there is no other true religion. Uh, and then no council ever pronounced about the issue of gays because it was so obvious. They, they say it's in scripture. Everybody thought it was obvious that you know being a gay you can't go to hell. <coughs> Saint Paul, you know, they effeminate the masculorum concubito uh, concubitores. Um, they will not go to the kingdom of heaven. So that was sufficient for us Catholics as an infallible pronouncement. He, the Pope Francis has not the authority to go against the decrees of his predecessors and the, um, uh, the what is decreed in the sacred scripture. When a, a Pope defines a dogma, he ties his successors to it. Whatever you shall bind upon earth shall be bound in heaven. And nobody else can Unbounded, including your successors. So uh, there cannot be a contradiction in a, in a magisterium. That's all we need to, to see. Because it's precisely because we believe in the magisterium <coughs> that we don't follow the new magisterium. Precisely, we, are, we can read this quote of Gregory XVI very comfortably that we are... Uh, the, the magisterium is a protecting asylum. It's a defensive wall. The Council of Trent, the decrees, those are a defensive wall. Anything can happen afterwards. Even an angel of God, St. Paul himself can show up with another gospel, no problem. We got the uh, defensive wall. But we need to stick to it. It's not that easy because they come to us with all the majesty and the authority and everything. First then, to repress the audacity of those who endeavor either to annihilate the rights of the Holy See or to detach from it the churches of which it is a support in life, incessantly impress on the faithful profound sentiments of confidence and respect towards it, and thunder in their ears those words of St. Cyprian, it is an error to believe that one in the church is in the church when he abandons the See of Peter, which is the foundation of the church. That is, we tell them they have abandoned the Sea of Peter. The Sea of Peter is the eternal Rome. <coughs> it's that one teaching of the eternal Rome. And then they, they answer to us, but come on, I am the one who is sitting on it. You are not sitting on, on the Sea of Rome. You are not the Pope. How dare you? And then we, we, we answer back, 
How dare you? How dare you? Even if you are sitting on that seat, how dare you contradict what was taught by the Sea of Peter? You are denying your own office. But, uh, but when, when you are contradicting your, uh, your predecessors. Authority has not given, been granted to you, says Vatican I, in order to innovate. That's, that's our, our first understanding. Authority, uh, the authority of Peter has been given to you so that you may keep the deposit and, and uh, uh, unearth it, but not to innovate. <coughs> So when we say how dare you, and we say how dare you, whichever is going to win, that's we know, uh, we know. But for the moment, it looks like you know we are pretty small. But you know, two and two equal four. You 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 can't change it. A dogma is as solid as two and two equal four. A Catholic dogma, whichever dogma was infallibly defined, is as solid. It has this charisma of infallibility. It's not. Your nobody is going to change that. Nine. So, space and resistance of Peter, in order thereby to guard the deposit of the faith. So the Pope is explaining, it's to Peter, yes, but for that one purpose. It's the keeping of the deposit of the faith. It's not the other way around. The faith is not at the service of the Sea of Peter. You understand? It's the Sea of Peter which is at the service of the faith. Just like authority means algeri in Latin, which means to augment, to increase. If, there, if somebody has an authority as a father, it's to increase, it's to help, it's to feed, it's to give life. That's the goal of authority. It's not the life of the family is, is not in the service of the authority. No. Authority has been established by God to provide the increase, to give life. <coughs> this should be then the aim of, our, of your efforts and the object of a continual vigilance to guard the deposit of the faith amidst this vast conspiracy of impious men whom we see with the liveliest grief come to scatter and ru ruin it. See, the deposit of the faith, he insists, that's the goal. That's the end product of authority. If the carpenter messes up, give us ugly, uh, you know, modern art and, uh, you know, chairs that collapse, uh, Auntie Julie is going to fire him and it's, she's not going to wait for a long time she's not going to allow the carpenter to waste this precious wood that wood is expensive <coughs> luckily it has grown from our property but that wood is very expensive today and she's not going to allow him to mess up the wood indefinitely so he will be fired if he, if he destroys the wood or if he burns him, uh, if he burns it in order to have his uh, lechon, or if he steals it. <coughs> so it's the same thing. The authority of Peter is for the sole purpose or the main purpose of the keeping of the deposit of the faith. Let and also all the laws of canon law, all these laws in canon law are for the preservation and the fostering and the multiplication and the spreading of the faith. They all go back to this one purpose. And faith gives ultimately, what does it give? What do you, uh, what does faith give, gives to you, we say on the baptism? Eternal life. In the end, that's the purpose. <coughs> and what we see in the Nubis Ordo, they tamper with the faith, and therefore, many souls go to hell. And that's what uh, Sister Lucy insisted to Father Puentes in her interview with Father Puentes. I am not here, she said, to describe you the uh, Cebu earthquake or the calamities uh, of the typhoons and everything. The essential calamity which is taking place now, because Our Lady has not been listened to, 
is the damnation of so many souls. The breakdown of authority is leading to the breakdown of the faith, which in turn leads to the massive damnation of souls. If people knew that you know, they have to go to confession in order to stay in the state of grace, in order to avoid hell, they would go to confession and they would go to communion and they would save their souls. But because nobody is telling them anymore what they have to do in order to save their souls, their souls are going to hell. Many souls, at least today. Nobody is rebuking uh, the Filipino ladies about uh, birth control or the, the Filipino men about you know, being real Catholic men. As a consequence, they, uh, their children are, uh, are you know, way, way below than the previous generation in the practice of the faith. And then the, the, uh, the, the demography of the Philippines is showing it, it's <coughs> plummeting just like other places. Not as fast, but it's going down, especially in the cities. Let us let all remember that the judgment as to sound doctrine which the people should be nourished, that the government and administration of the whole church belong to the Roman pontiff, to whom has been confided by our Lord Jesus Christ, as the fathers of the Council of Florence have clearly declared, the plenary power to feed, rule, and govern the universal church. As to the bishops in particular, their duty is to remain inviolably attached to the see of Peter, to keep the holy deposit with scrupulous fidelity and to feed as far as lies in their power the flock of God. That is, we have authority to feed, to give. You see, I, you know, I was interrupted by that, you know, I, we have to give all the time. Hence the name Father. Uh, otherwise we are not fathers if we don't provide. And people are starving today that we've never seen before. So we have to feed them. And now the main food is doctrine. That's the main food. And that's why, I mean, we, we try to do as best as we can to train you to the priesthood, to train you with books and doctrines and classes as much as we can. Because that's what the main food we give. For the priests, they must be subject to their bishops. So just like the bishops are subject to the Pope in order to feed, and so the priests are subject to the bishop who is subject to the Pope in order to feed, to teach the faith. So for the priests, they must be subject to their bishops and honor them as the father of their souls, according to the advice of St. Jerome. And never forget that it is forbidden them by ancient canons to do anything in the mystery confide to them or take upon themselves the office of teaching and preaching without the approbation of the bishops to whom the care of the faith has been committed and who will render an account of their soul. Let them, in fine, hold that certain and incontestable truth that all who seek to disturb this order in any way shape as far in them lies the constitution of the church. That's how the church works in normal time, you say. Because there again, it is stated that this authority is to feed, not poison, but food. But we are longing for that, that, that state of... Uh, uh, for that state. And in as much as we can have this state, then we, uh, we have it. That's why you know, as a member of the Society of St. Pius X, you know, we are, you know, a pious union approved by Rome, you know, by Bishop uh, Charrière. That approval was recognized by a letter of praise of Cardinal Wright. So, as you you know, for him it was important. As much as we could, we have the blessing of the Church. And now they come to us, they say, you, uh, SSPXNC, you don't have this. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Bishop Charrière looked for this approval with Archbishop Lefebvre, having in mind that the, the faith was not taught in Fribourg anymore. Bishop Charrière was the Bishop of Fribourg. 
So Bishop Shah, yeah, they, they all their understanding is that they are teaching nonsense in uh, in the University of Frigo, so therefore we have to establish a, a, a protection that society will send by the temple. The mind of Bishop Charrier was to provide Alger Le Clair and, uh, and the priests of Alger Le Clair and the seminarians was to provide them doctrine. That's with this in mind that uh, Bishop Charrier wrote the constitution of the Society of St. Pius X. So for those who are returning to the new Rome, I says, you are the ones who are breaking. Okay, excuse me. The uh, she insists that it's more 15, it's okay for you. 415. Yes. Okay, no, okay. So, uh, the, the mind of uh, Arjun de Clair and, the, and the mind of Bishop Charrier was the protection of the faith. Now, later on, all this was rescinded by Bishop Mani and all that. But it doesn't... Arjun de says, no, I was approved by the church. I had a... You know, I, 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 I set up something of the church. You got to tell me why to stop. And, and uh, the failure to follow the new magisterium is not a reason which is going to stop me. Because my congregation, that little thing, which is not even a congregation, it's a pious union, approved for a little time, that thing, that's enough for me to clean. You say, I, I was going in a following the direction of the church. But that's all we, that's all we have, it's not much. And then whenever we have a bishop, they yeah, will cling to that bishop who is still standing for the faith entirely. So, we cling to a bishop who publicly uh, refuses to say uh, or condemns the phrase that the new mass, Vatican II, and the new code, and the new profession of faith are uh, legitimate documents. Because this, this is a you know, Arjun Lefer considered the uh, new profession of faith of Calvin Ratzinger to be deadly. That we cannot go with this profession of the faith. He made a big deal out of it. Just like he made a big deal of the new code, of the new mass, and of the council. And he, he, he says we cannot and will not follow all these items. And whatever else is uh, new uh, presented to us. Because it is not the purpose for which authority has been established. But whenever we find authority, then we uh, uh, no, undiluted authority, then we, uh, we, we follow it. You know, whenever we have the, some bishops or something. It would therefore be a crime, a formal derogation from the respect due to ecclesiastical laws, to blame by an insane liberty of opinion the discipline which the Church has consecrated, by which the administration of holy things and the conduct of the faithful are regulated, which determines the rights of the Church and the obligation of its ministry, and to declare that discipline hostile to certain principles of natural law or incapable of acting by inherent, inherent imperfection or declare it subject to the civil authority. That was... Uh, the, um, what is called uh, Jacobinism, the principle of the French Revolution, is that the, uh, the church authority is under the civil power. You got to trace in the Philippines, for instance, the priest cannot celebrate marriage without the government permission. The government does not recognize marriages <coughs> that are... Uh, uh, not issued by a priest who is accredited with the Filipino government as a solemnizing officer. That's one of the traces. Um, before, but, but it was not approved. It was not approved. It's a violence made to the Catholic Church. Yeah. Uh, the license of the priest is automatic license from the government. Mm -hmm. There's no need for the civil authorities. No, per se, yes. Yeah. But you need to apply for a solemnizing, uh, being recognized as a solemnizing officer, no? I don't know. You don't know? Uh, if, uh, First, I, I need to apply. I'm a foreigner. The government does not give me the... the uh, if I celebrate a Filipino marriage here, 
uh, they don't recognize that marriage. They don't recognize a civil effect. So I have to obtain the paper from the government. Now maybe the Filipino government has consented to this to the Filipinos ordained in the diocese here in the Philippines. But, you know, uh, for uh, foreigners, we have to apply at least. So, but since to use the words of the fathers of the Council of Trent, it is certain that the Church was instructed by Christ and his Apostle, and that the Holy Ghost never fails by daily assistance to teach us all truth, it is a height of absurdity and outrage towards it to pretend that a restoration, a regeneration, had become necessary to secure its existence and its progress. So they are talking about a regeneration, a new life, everything <coughs> must change. As if it could be believed that it was thus subject to the faintness, darkness, or other alteration of this kind. So, the, uh, he is referring to a change in the doctrine of the church, is that the liberals, or the modernists, they say, you know, the Catholic Church is not up to date anymore. It's a misfit. <coughs> it is crumbling. It needs to be uh, uh, rethought entirely. And so, we need to open the DNA and do some uh, GMO, you know, genetically modified organism of the Catholic Church. We need to change the genes, because right now it's not working. So they're going to tamper with the genes of the Catholic Church. The problem is that as you touch one molecule of those genes, you're going to have a, you know, a complete monster. Because all the, the what's so special about the Catholic dogmas, if you touch one, what happens? If you touch just one iota, what happens? The what? The rest is altered as well. It's like a domino. Everything hinges. It's like a chain. So for a chain to be a chain, a working chain, all the rings must be tight. But you know, you know, we should lose one of them, you know. That ring should be updated and everything. No. All the rings must be there. And that's what he says. You, know, you, you cannot alterate anything. And what do these bold innovators seek except to give new foundations to an institution which should thereby be only man's work? So they want to give a new foundation of the church. They even talk about a new evangelization. It's new, new things, new catechism, new mass, new rite of exorcism. It was interesting to see all those Novus Ordo exorcists. They all went to the Vatican. They all, they all are Novus Ordo priests, wearing CVs and everything. But they say, hey, our Latin ritual works on the devil. Now your new thing doesn't work. And what did the Vatican say? The Vatican says, are you sure it doesn't work? I'm going to appoint a commission to verify that our new right of exorcism doesn't work. Did they do that? They said, no. You stick to the new right because it's new. Because this is what we want. You are not going to use it because it works. You are going to use it because we want you to use it. Because it's new. It's good for you because it's new. It's good for the simple reason that it is new and it is up to date with the world of today. It doesn't matter if people lose the faith with the new mass. <coughs> All the success, it's very sad. We've lost Gregorian chant, he said. The Diesire, the Liberame, the, the singing in the Holy Week, it's beautiful. He said, that's beautiful, that's in fostered the faith. It's magnificent. That traditional mouse, how beautiful it was, you know. Crocodile tears. But 
it has to go. It's beautiful, you know, like his tiara. He was holding his tiara with great respect. It was an ugly one, by the way. It looks like a mortar shell or, you know, you know, artillery thing, you know. So, but Novus Ordo tiara offered by his faithful of Milan, you know. He's got his nice faithful of Milan who love him very much. What does he do with the gift? Takes it and with all due respect puts it in a museum, puts it away. And he shuts the thing and then... I'm not going to use it anymore. It's very nice. And they tell us, oh, you traditional Catholics, you are very nice. But, you know, sorry to say, you are a little bit behind. You are retrograde. You are, uh, you know, you are, uh, you are, you know, museum pieces. And it's the same disease uh, always. New foundations to an institution and they uh, and realize what Saint Cyprian cannot sufficiently detest by rendering the church human from all divine that it is. So this, they, they, they base the church on man. Who is the one who said, and we also, we have the worship of man. Who is the one who said, Glory be to man? Famous guy. No, no. He's the one uh, uh, Pope Gabriel looks up to. Hmm? Paul the Six. So it's a closing allocution of Paul the Six in Vatican II, where he says, We also are worshippers of man. The Catholic Church, the favorite expression of John Paul II, is an expert in humanity. Or the formula of Vatican II, Christ become, became man in order to reveal man to himself. That's one of their favorite quotes. Man, 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 the dignity of man. It's a man-centered church. The, the new mass is man-centered. Man is at the center for them. And St. Cyprian says, this is horrible, this is not what we want. We don't want a church which is based upon man. We want a God-centered religion. Because that's the object of religion. The object of religare is to, to make the link between God and man. Now for them, religion is to make the link between Man and man and man. A recent quote of Pope Francis, he said, Christ became incarnate in order to give man the feeling of brotherhood. That's it. Christ has come here on earth in order to teach us how to be nice to each other. It's a man-centered religion. And so we have nothing to do with it.